Those of you who are taking thesis seminar wanted to provide a brief overview for week nine as we begin. Week nine, I think it's important to take a look at the schedule. Today is the 25th of March and we basically have this week, next week we basically have, we go into April, we're going to have until April 17th. So counting the complete weeks, we're going to have this week, next week, and then the following week. So three complete weeks plus three days in, um, of Holy Week. So I would anticipate basically three weeks uh, going until the 12th of April. If you can collect data during Holy Week, great, but uh, typically schools begin to slow down and there are some, some events that usually take place, maybe some exams, and a lot of different, um, different activities that could interfere with your data collection process. So keep that in mind. At this point in the process, everyone should be now collecting data based on the participants that they chose for their study. We've spent basically three weeks designing instruments and procedures that set out to choose the best participants for your study. So remember that you have, uh, you're using a purposeful sampling technique or approach so that you have a rationale or a reason for choosing the participants and you're also choosing participants that are most likely to provide you the information that you need. If in the event you begin collecting data this week and you find yourself not getting the information that you need to answer your research questions, then please see me right away. Uh, this is something that we need to discuss. Uh, we've been uh, very deliberate in trying to choose the best participants to avoid uh, something like that from happening, but of course it still could happen and uh, this is something that we need to discuss right away if this should happen. So, week nine. Here are central questions for this week. And number one, which purposeful sampling approach are, or approaches are most appropriate for your study? So remember the whole group discussion we had a couple of weeks ago where I provided about 14 or 15 different ways uh, or reasons for choosing your sample. So just make sure that it's very clear for you based on the purposes and objectives of your study that you have a good reason for choosing your, uh, your uh, participants. The second essential question, how have you planned your tentative data collection schedule to assure that you will obtain at least three different kinds of evidence? So when you begin your data collection process, after you've chosen your participants, I would meet with them briefly to give them a broad overview of the types of data and uh, for example, how many observations you will typically need or that you're planning on so that they know from the very beginning more or less what to expect. You can also, based on this conversation, get a feel for how open they are. Uh, this would probably be a time where teachers will, will tell you if there are any limitations uh, just by their reaction or they could be just, uh, they could tell you very clearly that uh, they only want to be observed once, for example, a week, or, or they're not going to have a lot of time to conduct interviews and that type of thing. So it's very important that initial conversation with your participants to get a feel for how open they are and how accessible they're, they're going to be for your, your, um, your, um, your study, and also for you to plan more or less how you uh, are going to schedule your observations, your interviews, maybe your focus groups. It, it, when you, you don't necessarily need all of the details. For example, if you're going to supply or uh, provide a questionnaire for your students, you don't necessarily have to have the exact date at this point, but you might mention that, uh, that you plan on, at some point, administering a uh, questionnaire for your students. Uh, the next question, how do the, data, how do the data that you collect align with the literature review and specifically your research questions? Remember that all of the data that you collect needs to, uh, need to relate to your literature review and it needs to re uh, relate to your research questions. So keep that in mind. Uh, sometimes students will come to me and ask, well, what do I observe or I'm not sure what to observe. Keep in mind the key words from your literature review. Keep in mind the research question or questions that you are 
uh, researching and also keep in mind any prior data that you collected up to that point. So for example, if you're conducting an observation or you're, you're, you're doing a, an observation and you're wondering what to focus on, maybe uh, recall any prior uh, data or data collection procedures that you applied. If you had an interview the, uh, the day before or two days before, keep in mind what that person told you in terms of what you're looking for in your observation. And as you accumulate that information over time, you're going to get more and more information and that's going to be more uh, informative as to what to look for and what to ask about in, in subsequent observations or interviews, I should say. So try to keep that in mind and uh, as you collect the data over the next three weeks. The final essential question for this week, how are you how are you anticipating any possible obstacles throughout your data collection period? For example, unexpected teachers meetings, school functions, etc. Things will come up. Uh, things will come up that you had no idea about. There are going to be some things maybe that come, come up that your participants didn't know about. But as much as they are aware of certain uh, meetings that are up and coming, uh, the better and I, I would try to plan and, and find out about those right away. It might even be worth checking with the, an administrator, whether it's a coordinator or a director of a school and ask them to see a schedule or ask them if there are any meetings coming up over the next three weeks or so, uh, what kind of functions they plan during Holy Week and so on. This will give you some insight into how you can plan your time uh, for collecting the data. So again, here are the, the process here. I'm not going to go over this. This is basically, uh, these, this process is embedded in these essential questions. But take a look at the process. Take a look at, again, the context of your study by being able to answer all of the questions here. At this point, all of these questions pretty much should be, uh, you should be able to answer those. Okay, so if these are not clear, these are, this is something that we can discuss in our tutoring session. Now, the, the last thing I want to talk about today here is the section for your literature review. And I'm sorry, not your literature review, the method section. So if you scroll down and you'll look at the, the template that I provided at the beginning of the semester, after or just below your literature review, where you should have your transitional paragraph, you're going to begin the methods section. Basically everything that we're doing these six weeks will be captured in this section called the methods section. And I suggest dividing up this section into three subsections. Participants, instruments, and procedure. So under the participants you want to include any demographic information for your study. So any information that you obtained through your questionnaires, for example. Many of you are asking uh, questions uh, in your questionnaires for personal information, and this is where this can be found. So maybe the age of the participant. This is where you can establish pseudonyms, so you can, uh, you can give your participants names to personalize the experience, but of course you're gonna maintain their confidentiality, so we're, we're gonna make up names for our, for our study. And any other information, for example, how long have they been teachers, how long have they been at a particular school, etc. This is the information that you would include in your participant section. Also remember to include the uh, instruments that you used. Now in this next section is where you can include the instruments. Uh, l let me say one more thing about participants. Uh, you want to mention something about ethics in this section, and this is where I would reference the, um, any informed consent forms that you used or any special permission, any special uh, permission letters that you used. And in the text, I would write something like C Appendix A. Okay, so throughout your text, anytime you reference something in your appendix section, you're going to give it a letter designation and you're going to um, continue using the sequence in alphabetical order. So you're going to say C Appendix A the first time you mention something in your appendix. The next time that you 
have a, an instrument or anything that you're including in your appendix, you'll, see, you'll say C Appendix B, C Appendix C, and so on. So the order in which you present or discuss each of the appendix in your method section is how you'll assign the letter uh, to that instrument. All right, so in your instruments uh, section, this is where you're going to include obviously mentioning and describing generally each of the instruments. All right, so this is where you'll describe basically the what and the why of these instruments. What was the function of it? And generally describe the, the instrument. Although they can see the example, we want to provide a, a general description of each of your instruments and again reference it uh, reference each one of them by saying C Appendix A, C Appendix B, and so on. Now, uh, this is slightly different than what we talked about, in, and I'm going to go ahead and change this here, so not to confuse uh, the, the issue here. Try to include instruments and procedure. You can, uh, you might even add this as your title. Okay, this, was, this has been a slight change over the years. Uh, this is a, an older template. And I think here we can just put data analysis. All right, so in your instruments, besides describing what and why about your instruments, I would also include how you collected the data. Okay, so just very generally, the way in which you collected the data over time. Um, think about how you're collecting your information from these six weeks of collecting your data and capture that here in this one paragraph. It's important to mention also at this point in the each one of these three sections create one paragraph for each section. One paragraph for each section. So you're going to have three paragraphs total for your method section. Again, approximately 500 words. In the data analysis section, this is where you can include the type of data, uh, the type of study that you are conducting, and describe how you analyze the information. Now the data analysis, do the best you can here. We're going to talk a little bit more specifically about the data analysis, how you're going to analyze the data the, the Monday of Holy Week. So just before you go on break, we're going to describe that. And uh, at this point, it may not, um, you may not have a clear idea how you're going to analyze the information, which is fine. But the reason why I want to give you a heads up about this section at this point in the process is that I think you should go ahead and start completing whatever you know at this point in your method section. And as you collect the data over the next three weeks, go in periodically and update this method section so that during Holy Week, the only thing that you're left to complete basically is going to be the data analysis section. Okay, and I think that would be the, the best and easiest way to do it. After we discuss with the whole group on Monday of Holy Week, the different data analysis, uh, uh, the different ways in which you can analyze your data, then all you'll need to do that last week during Holy Week is complete this section and then you're free to uh, continue analyzing information as you go into break and uh, begin writing up your results. So method section, one paragraph for each section, three, three subsections, one for participants, one for instruments and procedure, and a final one for data analysis. And again, I think the key takeaway here is to not leave this till, uh, till the end of the data collection process to, to go ahead and continue writing or add information. I can also, during our tutoring sessions, we can go in and discuss and I can look at your text as well and give you feedback directly and I think that will also be to your advantage. Right? If, I, if I'm able to give you feedback throughout the process these next, these last three weeks um, instead of leaving everything until the end. So I hope this help. I hope this helps. And again, this is week nine of our. Basically, we're entering week four of our six weeks that we're going to have for collecting our data. Most of you, in fact, at this point, everyone should have uh, should know which participants uh, now uh, are going to be included in their study after having collected information and data to provide justification for making that decision. If anyone is still at this point not sure about their participants, we need to discuss this immediately, right away, so that you can begin this week 
in collecting the rest of the data that's going to be now consisting for the most part of observations, interviews, focus groups, maybe some additional, in some of your cases, some questionnaires that might apply to uh, students or even possibly uh, teachers or any other uh, participants. And my final suggestion is I think it's very important that you are sharing your experiences with your classmates to compare notes, but remember that each of your studies are very much related to your context, related to the objectives of your, your study, related, they're related to your research questions, and it's quite normal to have a variety of different ways of collecting data. So uh, keep that in mind when you're uh, sharing your ideas with your classmates. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me, send me a, a message in your document, or obviously come by my office and we can discuss it in our tutoring sessions, or if need be, we can spe uh, schedule a tutoring session outside of our normal schedule. Just look at my availability and let me know when you'd like to meet.